As of 2014, Nigeria's annual fish demand is put at 2.66 million metric tons. Mm. But currently, locally, we produce barely 780,000 metric tons. Mm. The deficit is so huge that fish farmers can tap into. And finally, uh, the um, African Growth and Opportunity Act is a huge window for Nigerian farmers and fish farmers to export their products to the U.S. because uh, that gives you an opportunity to export your products uh, without any duty paid mm. to the U.S. market as long as your farm is certified. Mm. So those, that tells you about the potentials of fish farming uh, in Nigeria. Mm. Now let's look at fish farming basically. You see, what we do currently is uh, doing fish farming, just put your fish in water, grow it, and sell it live. But fish farming has different dimensions. Mm. I want to talk about fish farming across the value chain. That means fish farming in terms of broodstock production, that's the matured fish you want to use to produce your fingerlings mm. and juveniles. You need to culture it properly. Sometimes you get it from the wild. Sometimes you buy from farmers that have good breeds, and you uh, do what we call artificial insemin at, um, induced spawning. You do what we call induced spawning. So you induce the uh, matured female blue stock to fall into labor. Once they fall into labor, you um, apply the sperm of the male and uh, you have your uh, fries hatching out within 24 to 36 hours. The process is more detailed, but for the purpose of this lecture, okay. I'm just making it brief. Okay. Okay. Then um, you, you come out with your fries, that fry now grows into juvenile. So some people are into that aspect, they do, do only do juvenile production. They produce the juvenile and sell to grow out producers. Now, grow out production is all about buying your juvenile, stocking it in your ponds, whether eating or, or concrete ponds, raising it to mature table size of about a kilo and above, and selling it to, to customers, I mean consumers. Also, um, the next phase of it is not just um, raising the fish and uh, selling as table size, is important. That is where indeed the job creation is. It's important we add value to this fish. And that value addition is talking about smoking the fish, mm. it's talking about um, filleting the fish, it's talking about canning the fish. This for end usage now. For right? end users. Okay. So those are the kind of products that can now go to the export market. When you smoke it, when you fillet it, and you now can it, it can be consumed locally, it can go to the international market where you earn more. And as a matter of fact, in value addition provides more job than exactly. even fish farming. Exactly. Because, exactly. for instance, in a processing plant where you can process uh, about 600 tons uh, in a month, you are looking at uh, the possibility of about 300 staff working, 300 youths working in that, uh, particularly women. So it's a good job creator for, for, for women. Okay. And finally, the marketing and distribution. Currently, what obtains in the, the marketing and distribution of fish is the market women coming to buy life and uh, going to, some go to smoke and now sell. Some go to sell life in the various markets. Of course, restaurants sometimes come directly or they operate through these market women. So the marketing and distribution is also another area that people can go into. You can just be the distribution channel, buy off the farms and you distribute, add value and distribute. There are some people doing that currently. They just go to various farms, buy the fish and uh, smoke and sometimes they export, sometimes they sell locally. Mm -hmm. So basically, fish farming that I am advocating 
is the fish farming that is done across the value chain because that is where the future of Nigeria is in terms of food production. Mm -hmm. That's where the future of Nigeria is in terms of uh, employment Generation, creation. Yes. That's where the future of Nigeria is in terms of operating aquaculture on that global aquaculture practice. Beautiful. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Mr. Ademola, such an articulated lecture. We will take a break. When we come back, we'll be asking Mr. Ademola questions based on his lecture. Please stay with us. Welcome back to Impact Formula with Mr. Ademola Okeowo, CEO, I'm modeling your name, sorry, <laughs> CEO, Tritech Business Solutions Limited, the professionals in farming. We have just ended an informative session on aquaculture business. Now, sir, time to ask you some questions. What is the difference between aquaculture and fish farming? Well, basically, uh, aquaculture is um, all about aquatic organisms, both fish, uh, shrimp, snail, uh, even plants mm. they are comprised in aquaculture business. But fish farming is limited okay. to okay. fish. Just fish. Just fish. Beautiful. Uh, under con uh, cultured in water, under a controlled good. environment. Good, good, good. Okay, now, um, how do you describe the usual practice of going to the open water body to catch fish by fishermen and fishing companies? Well, that is uh, captured fisheries. <laughs> uh, you know, okay. uh, what we do, uh, you know, the emphasis on aquaculture is cultured fisheries. Cultured okay, okay, fish. okay. Um, but that one is captured fisheries. Captured you fisheries. see, uh, fishermen uh, go to the coast to, to fish, fishing vessels mm. go to the uh, water body to, to fish. That's captured fisheries. That's how to describe that. Okay, now let me ask you. If the practice of going to capture fish is actually still obtainable now, right? Then why do people still embark on fish farming? <laughs> it's very obvious. The, the fishing activities in the coast is uh, the, being depleted, so to speak. Why? Because uh, uh, the, there, has, uh, there has always been issues of pirates, pirates okay. on the coast, coastal okay. waters, okay. fishing vessels who there has been a series of kidnapping of mm. um, the car okay. crew of uh, fishing okay. vessels. Yes. Even the fishermen that goes to the overfishing has actually crept into exactly. our waters. Exactly. Exactly. So that they go to the um, uh, to the la lagoon to fish, and they fish continually. No off season. No, unlike in other clients where they are um, closed season, they allow the fish to regrow. Exactly. And but I, I understand. Overfishing fully. has been a problem. So it's depleting our resources and therefore we need to Very focus correct. on aquaculture. Very correct. Well well answered. Okay, um as a new or aspiring entry into fish farming business, what are the steps to be taken? Uh, the steps to be taken include first of all um, acquiring the know how. Mm. about aquaculture. You can't go into a business you don't know about. Definitely. It's important to Definitely. find out, acquire the know-how, go to various um, minist agriculture ministries to find out information, mm. go to seminars, go to training. Mm. Uh, then the uh, next thing is to look at putting up uh, a feasibility report. Mm. Get somebody to package a feasibility for you. Particularly concerning your location, you want mm. to use exactly. Then location is key. Is key. Yeah. Is key. Then draw up a business plan. Once you have your business plan and your funding, and it's commensurate with your business plan. One thing that is important with agri aquaculture is the fact that the, the moment you stock your fish, you cannot um, uh, sell it halfway. It has to mm. be up to one kg size, otherwise mm. you will be losing. Mm. Uh, you will be running at a loss. Okay. So it's important your funding is intact before you go into it at all. Okay. Thank you very much. Nice. Now, in your explanation of 
aquaculture and fish farming. The phrase controlled environment featured prominently. What are the types or what types of culture methods are available for farmers? Yeah, uh, not quite a number of them. Uh, you have uh, the, the glass tanks, like the aquarium tank. Okay. People use that to, to hatch fish. They use that to culture ornamental plants. Okay. You have the, um, we call it uh, vats, the wooden box lined with tarpaulin. Mm. You can also use that. And they are, they are easy yeah. to access, right? Yeah, they are easy. Carpenters can just okay. uh, put that together for you. Okay. You have the tarpaulin tank that is uh, most often imported. Mm. Or you can do an improvisation, wood with tarpaulin. Uh, so I've, 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 I've seen that. Uh, I've seen yeah. that. You okay. can also use um, the concrete tank. Mm. That's, uh, but that, that, that would be if you own the if compound. You own the, yes. the property. Yes, exactly. Uh, so you can do something permanent okay. on it. Okay. You could also, if it's a, an area where it's swampy or it's loose, the water table is so high, mm. you could do excavation of the ground mm. and do earthing pond. Mm. And uh, in recent times, you have people doing cage culture. Cage? Cage mm. culture. People put um, uh, cages of uh, fish with that, uh, uh, what's it called now, PVC pipes mm. with nettings. They put mm. it on the lagoon. Okay. If you look behind, okay. you look, yes. yes, looking, going through Todd Midland Bridge, looking from Todd Midland Bridge mm. towards Unilag, you see by okay. the adjective, there's one okay. frame. So you are actually availing yourself of the water the around water. you. You're using the Beautiful. water body. Exactly. There's a risk in that, you know, this is lagoon that is surrounding us. Yeah. So you have to target the period when there is fresh water okay. in the lagoon. Okay. Because uh, the fish we culture is a freshwater fish. Okay. So we need to ensure that there is okay. fresh water and you put your fish in it. Thank you very much. Sir.